welcome back to well welcome back basically um, I just want to say a very quick thank you to everyone who's subscribed I really really appreciate it and if you're not already subscribed then please do join me on this journey to becoming a successful artist so today we've actually got a little bit of an unboxing to do so there's this artist that I actually follow on Instagram who does the most amazing oil pastel pieces now traditionally oil pastels for me have always been a bit of a medium that I really struggle to use so I love watching her work and I really wanted to give them another go now she uses the Paul Rubens oil pastels so I went and bought this set it was really cheap and I'll put an Amazon link in the description box below I don't think it cost me any more than 30 pounds it was quite cheap so let's have a look at this now on here it says there are 48 pieces and then it also has a little sentence here. So it has a little sentence on the box. It says, don't worry, the best will always inadvertently show up. May you have the courage to move forward and ease to step back. Well, I quite like that. It's quite cute. The box is really cute. It's really colourful. So we open up the box. We have a nice little pamphlet in here. Oh, that's cool. So this has some details on what other pastels you can buy but it also tells you how to blend so we're going to lift off the foam oh wow okay so we've got tons of colors they actually look really really nice i'm really excited to try these uh, there's a couple of whites which i love so we've got one two three is that a white as well four whites so there are four whites in the set of 48 so that's pretty cool because obviously you use the white for blending uh, there is one pastel stick that has like an either an older or a newer uh, logo on it with the sort of italic font so I'm not sure what that's about so I've seen this girl on Instagram she uses a black pad a lot of the time so that's what I'm going to use let's just get a couple of colors and have a look at what they're like on this black pad so we've got this gorgeous purple color so let's try that okay so i can already tell you the coverage is pretty decent let's try and smudge it out with this light oh that's nice so the problems that i've had in the past with oil pastels is that they just haven't blended very well oh my okay so i want you to have a look at that so have a look at how that's blended really nicely just there and i'm just using my fingers wow okay that is much better already than other oil pastels i have used in the past let's put a bit more of the lilac on there oh yeah so much better wow okay so i don't know if you can see that but it's blended really really nicely now i'll show you something that i kind of tried to do with a previous brand of oil pastels and they just didn't blend so you can see there's not really any smooth blending between the colors and you know i went over this for quite a long time to really try and get some smooth blending and the lighter colors you can see just had no coverage at all it, it just wasn't great but that already is a thousand times better than the other ones that I used. Now the other ones that I used were called Montmartre. I did buy them from TK Maxx to be fair because I just wanted to have a play with them uh, but they weren't just they just weren't good enough so that's really exciting so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you guys to like an overhead view and I'm going to attempt to draw something. Okay so I'm just going to play with these really I'm not going to go too mad on creating like an actual piece I just want to have fun and see how they work um so I used to live in Lincolnshire and we used to get the most amazing sunset so I'm kind of gonna take inspiration from that use some oranges some reds some pinks and some purples the sunsets that we used to get were just, oh my God, they were amazing. So we had these really beautiful 
pinks and purples. And the purple was just the deepest and richest purple I've ever seen in a sunset. And I can honestly, hand on heart, say that I have never, ever seen a sunset quite like it. So if you're ever in England and you're an artist, I would highly recommend at some point heading to Lincolnshire. Now, if you're not an artist, mm, there's not a lot to do in Lincolnshire. Lincoln's great. You could go to Lincoln. That's pretty awesome. Uh, but other than that, there's really not much going on. So just use the blue here to, this is at the very top of the skyline, mixed in with some dark, dark, dark purple. This is going to be the sun here. I'm just going to try and put a bit more yellowy orange on that there. Around the outside. So you can see all I'm doing is kind of blocking out where I want things at the minute. I'm not focusing on creating an actual you know, peace with really obvious areas. I'm just kind of very, 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 very vaguely blocking things out, adding colour. This fantastic pink colour is just utterly stunning. And it's it's just, I think, with oil pastels, certainly with something like this, it's just quite good to just have a play and actually enjoy the artwork, enjoy the sort of making the artwork so i just enjoy making it i'm going to try and add some a couple of clouds in here as well at some point and you can see already how well it's blending with the purple and blue with some of that beautiful lilac as well i love this color that is just utterly gorgeous these are really creamy. Some of the colours definitely feel different, I would say. Not all of them feel as creamy. Like this one is really creamy. Like, oh my God, that purple I've just used, wow. Um, but some of the other colours, they're not as creamy, which is interesting. Uh, and then we want more of this. Now, interestingly enough, there isn't like a pale pastel pink. This, I would say, is more of a coral. There isn't really a really pale pastel kind of pink anywhere in this set. So I, I would say that's probably the one colour that's missing. This is a rich cerise. Um, we've got like a, a peach tone. But again, it's not really that pale pink. You guys know what I'm talking about, that kind of baby pink. And I know this looks like a whole mess of just colour right now, but honestly, I promise you, it will not look like that in the end. So let's have a look at blending. So I'm just taking my finger and blending that blue. Probably should have started with a lighter colour, but it was calling me. I love blues. I'm just going to blend that down into these purples using side to side motions. Look at that, that's amazing. And some rounded motions as well, some circular motions. So I want a bit more of this purple in here just so we can really blend it. Wow. Oh, I'm in love. I cannot explain to you how much easier these are to use than the Montmartre ones that I bought. These are just, my God, they blend. Now, as a, so I use a lot of soft pastels and as a soft pastel artist, I cannot stand using my fingers to blend my soft pastels. Uh, it is, <laughs> to me, it is like a cardinal sin. I hate using my fingers. But for this, because they're so creamy, because they're so smooth and buttery, there's none of that kind of dry fingers on a chalkboard kind of feeling that you get with soft pastels. 
I actually really am enjoying this. Wow. Oh, these were so worth getting. Oh my gosh. I can't, like, even. These are just, whoa. Amazing. So you can see now, just by blending. 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 Has anyone seen that film, Blended? Oh my god, it's so funny. I'm such a loser. I love everything that Adam Sandler's done. <laughs> so I'm going to use a clean finger. So let's blend the coral peach out. And then what I will do with this, because you can still see some of the black underneath, obviously, I'm going to go back in and add some more colour on top. But so far, I'm, I'm so impressed. It's already so much better than the one I did before. And I think that using mediums like oil pastels is quite good for me in particular because I, as I've said in previous drawings, I can be very, very rigid. Um, sorry, in previous videos, I, I can be very rigid in how I approach my art. And I think that is partly because of the fact that, you know, I usually do a lot of commissions and of course, when you're drawing other people's animals, you have to be accurate. They've got to look like the animal. If it doesn't look like the animal, then invariably you have an unhappy customer. Of course, that's not what we want. We don't like unhappy customers. So exercises like this, and if you guys are the same, if any of you have the same kind of issues, if you do realism, for example, and you really struggle to open yourself up to doing something that's a little bit more free. I do think using mediums and doing little exercises like this, where you can just sit and be with yourself and enjoy the process, I think that's really great. I think that's a great thing to do. And I think it's something that every single artist should do as well. And I feel so relaxed doing this. I'm not gonna lie, like I could do this forever. And it's fun. This is fun, like I'm loving it. And of course it's great like talking to you guys when I started doing it, really enjoying that, really enjoying filming YouTube videos for you guys. This is a couple of days before Inktober that I'm doing this, so we've got Inktober's coming up. And here's a question for you. So would you prefer it if I do like a video a day on each Inktober prompt? Or would you prefer perhaps a week's worth of videos? where I do seven prompts all in one week, almost like, like a studio vlog, perhaps. What would you prefer? Post it down in the comments below and let me know. I'd be really interested in your opinions. Because obviously this channel is as much for you guys as it is for me as well. So I'd love to know what you think. What would you prefer? I'm gonna add some more red in there, I think as well. There's not enough of that kind of really rich red. There's a lot of purple. We need some more, yes. Now, of course, there comes a point where the paper gets saturated. This is quite um, smooth paper. There's not a huge amount of tooth on it. Uh, and if you're a pastel artist, you'll understand this. Once there is not, there's no tooth anymore, there's a lot of, um, it's quite difficult to add more to the paper because it, it just can't, take any more basically and I can do a video a bit more on explaining why that is. I do think 
oil pastels are probably a little bit more forgiving because you can kind of layer on top of them uh, a bit more than perhaps you could with a soft pastel but certainly there will be a point at which you just can't add any more oh my goodness this is just amazing i'm so so happy with this and i'll do a comparison of the two brands i think because the difference is insane i'm using exactly the same paper all i've done is changed the oil pastel brand and honestly it is a huge difference so i can hand on heart say yes materials do make a difference to your artwork um and obviously if you can't afford them you know it's you've got to work with what you can afford at the end of the day um but the nice thing about these is that they aren't too expensive for for what they are i actually think they're really great quality and they do do smaller sets as well so i'll link it below have a look on amazon see what you can find but sometimes you're better off saving your money a little bit and investing in the slightly more expensive products now i've found um, that is quite common as well with like things like soft pastels the paper that you use is really important i would say probably with soft pastels it's the paper more even than pastels themselves sometimes um so i used to use de la Rowney murano paper not a lot of tooth on it um but you know it was what i could buy at the time it's what i could afford and i didn't know a huge amount about soft pastels at the time and then I actually, and this is a great tip for you guys, actually, if you are struggling to find art materials for a decent price, look on eBay. Now, I managed to buy a job lot of soft pastels and pastel paper, and I managed to have, it had like a pastel mat in there, it had um, the medium, so I can't really pronounce that very well. Um, but it had a lot of different paper in there which was fantastic some really expensive papers and i got it for so cheap and it had loads of soft pastels and it meant that i was able to actually buy stuff that and try stuff that i wouldn't be able to ordinarily so have a look on ebay and you can actually i don't know if you know this but on ebay you can actually change the settings so you're just looking at stuff that's used so if you go into the search filter change it to used and then you can go from there and it'll bring up everything that has been used slightly so that's how i've managed to invest into my art career without spending a huge amount of money which has been a godsend to be honest with you because it means i can kind of find the stuff that works for me without paying too much which is fantastic so these are kind of some clouds so happy with these I'm gonna finish shortly because otherwise this video is gonna be so long and let's face it our attention spans are not what they used to be and then what I'll do is I'll continue working on this and see what I can come up with as like a kind of finished piece and I'll post it on my Instagram. So if you'd like to check my Instagram out, it is in the comment box below. So please feel free. I would love it if you followed as well on Instagram. I'm currently trying to finish off the August for Artists stuff on there. I am terrible with anything like that because I work full time. I don't often have time to do a huge amount of pieces. So October is going to be interesting. That's why we've prepped for it. And so that is it for today i really hope that was helpful um i really enjoyed using these they are so soft and so buttery that they're just unbelievable so i will show you a comparison between what i achieved with these pastels versus the montmartre pastels that i used so this is the paul Rubin. so you can see lots of blending very nice very easy to blend still got some more work to do with this but i thought i'd stop that here 
and then <laughs> look at the difference. That's with the Montmartre pastels and they were so difficult to blend and I just could not get that smooth sort of blending between all the colours. Whereas like this one, amazing. So I would highly recommend these if you'd like to try them out. The artist that I actually was inspired by to try these is called Rosie Sketchbook. That's her name on Instagram. She does some absolutely stunning pieces on there. I would highly recommend checking her out and giving her a follow as well. But yeah, I... I'm in love. I absolutely love these and I have never liked oil pastels. I've always hated them traditionally. So I would really, really recommend giving them a try. Let me know. I'd love to know in the comment box below. Are you thinking about investing in some of these now? Are you going to try oil pastels? If you do, what brands are you going to go for? Are you going to try the Paul Rubens ones? Those are the ones that I would recommend. Personally, I wouldn't go for the Montmartre ones. Um, they, they really weren't very good at all, as you can see from my video but I'd love to know whether or not this has kind of inspired you to try a different medium in your artwork as well if you haven't already I'd love to have you subscribe so please do hit that subscribe button and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video so I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one bye mm. cold coffee my favorite doing yeah. soft pastel <sighs> I've got to stop again says don't eat.